Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in. I hope you're all well wherever you are and whatever you're up to. Welcome to part two of this new fabric focus blog series that I'm doing. Um, if you missed the first one, then this new series is all about helping you to pair fabrics up with sewing patterns. It's one of the really common questions that we get asked in the shop and also I get asked a lot on Instagram and, and online as well. So each week I'm focusing on a different type of fabric and yeah, just giving you a bit more detail about it, the different terms you might come across, tips for working with it and then lots of pattern suggestions too. So this week is focusing on jersey, stretchy, knitted fabrics, anything stretchy. Um, and that's the sort of common char characteristic, that's the theme of this video. So the fabrics that I talk about might be made from different things. They might be made from cotton or viscose or medal um, or polyester or you know various fibres, but they will all have in common with them that they are stretchy. Um, fabric and this type of fabric has just become so much more popular I'm sure you guys will have noticed it as well there's just so many more dressmaking patterns out there that are for this type of fabric and the choice and selection of fabrics that you can get and um, for me as somebody who's who has a fabric shop and is selling fabric and um, it's much easier for me to get it and therefore it's much easier for you guys at home that are making things for yourself to get as well so before we get started into the juicy details, there's just a few general points that I wanted to mention first of all. So the terms knitted, jersey, stretchy, they can get used interchangeably a lot, but they essentially all just mean fabric that does stretch. Um, and as I said before, it can be made from different types of fiber as well. So jersey fabric isn't just cotton, it can be other things too. Like what I was saying in the cotton video last week, the fabric can get described in terms of its grams per square meter and um, so it's got that numerical sort of value to it so if you had a square meter of the fabric and you weighed it it would give you a number and um, and obviously the heavier the number the thicker the fabric it is the heavier the fabric and um, but we don't always have that information readily available and also it can be quite hard to put a number into context sometimes so that's why those more subjective terms do get used lightweight medium weight and then you'll also come across more technical terms as well so it might be point Roma or interlock or double knit or single knit and uh, so I'm going to go into more detail of the most common ones that you might come across and then generally I've just tried to make things as relevant as I can to the home dressmaker so it's there are loads of other different types of fabric out there that I'm sure you will come across but I've tried to hone it down to things that you might find on the back of sewing patterns that you're looking at and then also the types of fabrics that we sell in the shop as well. So the next thing that I wanted to talk about was the amount of stretch that a fabric has because saying that a fabric is stretchy is quite an umbrella term and there's actually a bit more detail that you can go into when you come to choose a fabric for a pattern to make sure it's the right type of stretch for the thing that you want to make. So first of all you can get a two-way stretch or a four-way stretch. So a two-way stretch is where it will stretch in between the selvage edges and a four-way stretch is when it will stretch that way and it'll also stretch lengthwise as well. So a good sort of way to kind of think about it is if you imagine a swimsuit, like an all-in-one swimsuit, um, it's got to stretch four ways because it's got to stretch the length of your body to to be able to get it on so you can sit down and stand up and swim obviously and then it also stretches the width of your body too so it can get round you so it's got it's stretching that way and it's also stretching that way as well so a pattern might say it's got to have four-way stretch or it's got to have two-way stretch whatever so that's something you might come across and then the next thing is the percentage of stretch. So fabrics can have, stretchy fabrics can have a percentage of a stretchy fiber in them. So they might be made, for example, from 95% cotton and then 5% elastane or spandex or a, a specific stretchy fiber. But the percentage of that stretchy fiber isn't the percentage that it stretches. When we talk about the stretchiness of fabric, we're referring to how much does it physically stretch when you stretch it, how much is it stretching to that's the percentage of stretch so on the Megan Nielsen website there is this really really good printable thing that you can get it's just like a, you just print it off in your printer at home and it's a lovely clear diagram that just helps you to calculate the percentage of stretch so you basically hold your fabric against the the first section of the chart and then you stretch it until you feel resistance and that tells you the percentage of stretch 
So the reason that that is really important to know about, certainly for some patterns where it's specifying it, is that some patterns are designed to have negative ease. So that means that the garment that you make will be smaller than your actual body because that's where the fit and the, the style of the garment comes from. The fabric is stretching around your body so it won't do that unless it's smaller than your actual body. So if you use a fabric that's not stretchy enough, for a certain project with that the percentage is specified it just means you're not going to be able to get it on or you're going to struggle to get it on and then when it is on it's going to be hard to like move around in it and um, so if your pattern says it's got to have 30 percent stretch then it is important to make sure that you do have a fabric that has that amount of stretch so next I wanted to briefly cover how the fabrics are actually made and um, they're they're made in a different way to the the woven cottons that I was talking about last week so the the fibers that make them aren't going in and out of each other in a sort of grid like form they're all kind of looped together and the way that those fibers come together it gives the fabric a stretchy property itself so even if a a stretchy fabric is made from 100% cotton, it will still have give and it will still have stretch in it because of the way that it's made. Um, quite typically, these fabrics, instead of being created flat, they are created in a big tube. So the machine will be like a, creating a big cylinder of fabric and then in order to get the fabric flat on a roll or a bolt or however you buy it, the machine then has to cut the tube so that it goes flat. And when that happens, quite often they'll put something on the cut edge of the fabric just to stabilize it and um, stop it from coming distorted or, or stretching out of shape. So sometimes when fabrics look like they've almost got a sort of glue mark or a splodgy mark along the selvages, that's because they've been made in a tube, the machines cut the tube open and then they've put that glue on the edges just to stabilize the fabric. So you can get single knit fabrics which have quite an obvious right and wrong side to them. So the right side will, will look quite smooth and if you looked really really closely you'd see almost sort of like tiny little mini arrows or v-shapes like you would see in a, in a knitted garment and um, like a jumper or something and then the reverse of the fabric has got lots of tiny little bumps on it and it might it might not feel quite as smooth it might not have the same sort of sheen to it and um, double knit fabrics or interlocks or ponty romas they are created in a way that it's like two layers of fabric together so they tend to be a little bit thicker because it's like two layers together and they generally look the same front and front and back and then loop back or french terry fabric is created in a way that the reverse of the fabric has lots of tiny little loops on it and this type of fabric was originally designed specifically for sportswear and that it would help to wick the sweat away from your body of these little loops that are on the back of the fabric and um, but it can also act as like an, an insulating layer as well to help keep you warm because it's it will sort of trap air in that that looped section at the back of the fabric the next thing that I wanted to touch on is how to wash and how to care for your stretchy fabric because this type of fabric will shrink. It just does. That's just what happens. So you must, must pre-wash it before you cut your fabric out, before you make it into a garment. So you can just do that in your sewing machine. That's what I do. Just bung it in. Usually fabrics are fine at 30 degrees and I use the second highest spin cycle on my machine, which is 1200. Um, some fabrics can shrink again after the second wash um, and sometimes that can even be up to 10%. So just kind of bear that in mind so that fabrics will do that. And obviously if you don't pre-wash it and you make something and then you wash it afterwards, the length of whatever you make is just gonna go and be, yeah, it's just gonna be shorter. It's happened to me. I mean, it's tempting, isn't it? You just wanna sew sometimes, but please do pre-wash them. Um, you can tumble dry them as well, but that tends to shrink them even more. And I find that it sometimes just doesn't make the garment last as long. It just doesn't look as good for as long. So it's better to just air dry them if you've got the this, this, this space and the time to do that. Um, the other thing that I usually do when I pre-wash fabrics is I'll try to dry it as flat as I can as well. What you want to avoid is that when you pre-wash a fabric that it doesn't dry stretched out. So if you hang your stretchy jersey fabric up on a washing line, the weight of the, the wet fabric is going to hang down and it's going to dry stretched. So I have one of those air clothes air dryer things that's from Ikea, but I'm sure you can get them various places and it just kind of opens out to have quite a flat level surface on the top so then I'll just fold the fabric in half fold it again and then just lay it out on top of that so the air can get underneath and just 
yeah, just dry it that way so that it's relaxed as possible when it dries. So having said all of that, why would you choose Jersey fabric to do dressmaking with? First one is it's really quick and easy to sew because you don't have to finish off the seam allowances. This type of fabric tends not to fray. So even if you're just sewing it on your regular normal sewing machine at home, you just need to sew the seam and you're done. It's really quick and easy. Super comfy to wear. Um, I've got a Sal closet case pattern Sally jumpsuit on just now in jersey fabric and it just feels so comfortable they're easy to wash as I said before you just bung it in the washing machine and then they can also be easier to fit as well because the fabric just stretches around your body and um, so that can make it a bit of a quicker project as well because you're not sort of messing about with the specifics of the fit because the fabric just stretches and, and that's what can give you the fit of the garment so now I want to just give you some general tips on actually sewing with jersey fabric. The first one is check what the seam allowance is. Quite often these types of garments are designed to be sewn on an overlocker and the seam allowance on an overlocker or serger is 3 eighths of an inch and if you're used to working with woven fabrics you might be more used to half an inch or 5 eighths of an inch so if you are sewing jersey on a regular sewing machine just check what the seam allowance is um, before you get started. Um, the next one is to use a ballpoint needle, jersey ballpoint needle and that's so that it just minimizes the chance of getting holes in the seam the, the needle just pushes through the fabric rather than stabbing or piercing it and um, the the size of the needle will sort of go with the thickness of the fabric so if it's quite a thin flimsy fabric you'd be looking at probably a 70 and um, 80 does most stuff most of the time I use an 80 but if it's a much thicker fabric it's got a fleecy back to it it's a sweatshirt one you might want to go up to 90 and um, but 80 generally is like a good sort of all-rounder but yeah if it was really fine a 70 if it was really thick then you could go up to a 90 remember to use a stretch stitch or a long narrow zigzag stitch when you come to sew it and that's so that your seams can actually stretch with the garment if the fabric's stretching your seams have got to be able to stretch as well and try to keep the fabric as relaxed as you can when you sew so sometimes I'll push my machine back a little bit from the, the table that it's sitting on so that the weight of the fabric rests on the table rather than on my knee and then just be conscious that your hands are, are guiding it through but you're not holding the fabric back or stretching it as it's sewn it must be kept as relaxed as possible when you come to put in the neck band, if your fabric has got that, if it's a t-shirt or a jumper and it's got a, a, a neck band around it, that can be a little bit tricky. I know sometimes people find that the hardest bit of sewing a stretchy garment, but I've done a separate video that explains in quite a lot of detail two different ways that you can do it. So you can find that on my YouTube channel, a link to it in my blog post as well. So check that out if you're wanting a little bit of extra info on neck bands. And then the last thing is when you do actually come to cut your fabric out, you can't really rely on the selvages to sort of make sure that the fabric is straight and flat like you do with woven fabric. And that's because the selvages are kind of kind of fake selvages. Remember earlier when I was saying that the fabric gets knitted in a tube and then it's cut and you can't always rely on that machine cutting the fabric 100% on the grain of the fabric. So I find generally a more useful way to look at it is when you create the fold in a fabric you fold you, know, you folded it in half or you folded the the fabric in to lay your pattern pieces out is if you've got stripes you can use them as a guide so you from the fold you can just follow the stripe out and make sure that the same stripes are lining up with each other or if it's a printed jersey and it's got a, a design on it a sort of with a uniform rows or columns or whatever you can use the the print to help you line up and get it straight too because you'd obviously want that looking straight on your garment if it's a totally plain fabric there's not really any of that to go on what I usually do is try to look really closely at the fold of the fabric and you can usually see the sort of lines of the the stitches that have made the fabric you want to just try and make sure that they are running parallel to it of course you can sort of just like smooth the fabric out and make sure there's not any sort of drag lines or bumps in it too and um, but it can just take a little bit more tweaking and kind of moving around to get to get that right so now I want to go into a little bit more detail of the different types of jersey stretchy fabric that you might come across when you're looking at sewing patterns. I've got examples of lots of different ones that we have in the shop as well and I've also got loads of pattern suggestions too. But what I want you to bear in mind is that when it comes to pairing stretchy fabric with a pattern, there can be quite a 
quite a lot of overlap. So what I hope that you can take away from me showing you all the different kinds is getting used to how a fabric actually behaves. Some of them will hold their shape more, some of them will drape and kind of swish and move around a little bit more. And depending on how that fabric behaves, will affect the style of the garment. So say it's a t-shirt that isn't totally fitted, you know, it's maybe fitted around the shoulders and the neck, but then it's a bit looser, you know, towards the hemline. The closet case patterns ebony is a really good example of that one. If you use a really lightweight sort of swishy fabric like a viscose or a medal, there's going to be a lot of movement in that and it's going to swish around a lot. Or if you use a thicker, heavier fabric, it's just going to hold that fuller shape a little bit more. So neither of them are wrong, they just give a different look. And when you come to pair your fabric with a pattern, it, it's, it's useful to try and sort of start to envisage, okay, if I use that fabric, it's quite floppy, and so if I make a garment with it, then that's going to sort of look like this, you know, it's going to drape and it's going to move and just just sort of try to envisage the end product and it can help you choose the right fabric so that you get a garment that you want. So the first one I'm going to talk about in detail is cotton jersey fabric. It's a single knit fabric, so it's got that very obvious right and wrong side. Um, the one that I've got here to show you, this grey one, it's 95% cotton and 5% elastane. Um, so it is nice and stretchy. And I usually find that cotton jerseys, although they get classed as, as light to medium weight fabrics, they do tend to hold their shape and structure a little bit more. They're really good for t-shirts. They're really popular for kids clothes as well um, and I've got a few different pattern recommendations for that so the green line lark tee is a good one the tilly in the buttons agnes top the named patterns anari tee fancy tiger crafts wonderless tee the paper cut bowline sweater the cashmere concord t-shirt and the two stitches baby grow they are all patterns that you could use a cotton jersey for and um, we do have a range of just total plain cotton jersey fabrics we've also got some marl ones as well that's what this grey one is comes in a few different colours um, depending on when you're watching this video they may or may not be in stock but they are generally ones that we sort of have on order so if we've not got any at the moment it will be coming back in again soon um, so that is the cotton jersey. The next one that I wanted to show you is viscose. So the viscose jersey, it um, does tend to have a stretchy fibre in it as well. So it might be lycra or spandex. Um, this one that I've got here, which is a sort of nice kind of bright patterned bluey one, it's got 4% lycra and the rest is viscose. And if I hold it out just to show you how it moves around, it drapes much, much more so it's much more much more kind of swishy and it's, yeah it's got much more movement in it so also good for t-shirts but also good for fabrics that have more of a looser design so a good example would be that closet case patterns ebony which i mentioned before and um, another good one would be the paper cut amori twist top because it's got quite a lot of fullness at the front so the fact that the, f the viscose fabric is much thinner um, and it does float around a lot more is, is good for styles that are just generally a bit fuller. The Megan Nielsen Briar is another good one, the cashmere wrap dress that's the Appleton it's another one that recommends light to medium weight, stretchy fabric. So really the main takeaway of viscose jersey is that it tends to be much lighter weight. It's much more floppy and it's going to move around a lot more. So staying on that kind of vein of floppiness, the next one I want to talk about is single knit modal jersey fabric. Modal is just another type of fibre that is, it's made, um, it's made from the pulp of trees as well but just it's just in a different way so it's, it is kind of similar to viscose but slightly different um, and it is it tends to be quite lightweight and sort of very very kind of floaty it's very soft as well it's usually much softer than viscose you can get slightly different thicknesses of that as well so I've used this to make the closet case patterns ebony tea and then actually the jumpsuit that I'm wearing just now this is the closet case sally jumpsuit which is only available as a pdf um, but I used the slightly thicker medal that we've got 
for that one. Other good patterns would be the True Bias Nico Top, the Green Line Lark Tee would be good for this as well, um, the Paper Cut Bowline Sweater, the Amori Twist Top again, mentioned the Ebony Tee, and the Named Kilo Wrap Dress are all good patterns to use with that type of fabric. So yeah, it's viscose and single knit medal are very similar. They're just really floppy and move around a lot. The next one I wanna talk about is Look Back or French Terry fabric, which is essentially the same thing. And you can, it's a bit of a bigger area because you can get look backs that are made from different fibres. So we've got a range of medal look backs which are much more floppy and silky and drape a lot more. And they are good for things like the paper cup Copelia Cardi, I've made it to use that, the Lark Tea, the Green Line Linden, and um, the Kyoto, the paper cut Kyoto sweater is another good one. The main thing with the look back medal is that it is really floppy and and floaty it's quite stretchy too and um, so it's not going to hold its shape or structure that well it's going to move around a lot and whatever whatever garment you end up making whereas the cotton look backs tend to hold their shape and their structure a little bit more and um, but again still good for the linden you could use it to make the the fjord cardi as well it's just going to hold its shape a little bit more i've also used it to make the megan nielsen jara and it would be good for the tilly and the buttons nora top too so really with the look backs is thinking what is it made from and how is it going to feel and behave. The medal ones tend to be much floppier, the cotton ones tend to hold their shape a little bit more. The next one is the sweatshirtings, the fleece back sweatshirtings and they tend to be a little bit thicker um, but easier to work with because they're going to they're going to hold their shape and their structure a bit more so you can think about like classic jumpers the green line linden is a another good example it's the, the linden's good for so many different types of jersey and um, the paper cut undercover hoods another good one the two stitches charlie the so house seven toaster is a good one for that I've used it to make the Stella hoodie, which is in the Tilly and the Button stretch book. Um, the Talviki sweater from Named Patterns is another good one. Um, we've got a really popular range of fabrics called the Cozy Colours, and it has got a little coloured fleck in it, and it's got a lovely, nice, soft fleece back to it. They're made from cotton. But yeah, they come in lots of different colours um, and they're, they're, they're really popular for cosy jumpers. With these thicker fleece back sweatshirtings, it is worthwhile looking at whether they do have a stretchy fibre in them as well. So elastane or spandex, if they are just cotton or cotton and polyester, they'll probably have more of a give rather than a stretch. So that's why they're, they are much better suited to the sort of looser styles of jumper because they, they, you're going to be able to, to pull them on and off much easier because they're loose. If, if it's something that's quite fitted, the ones that don't have the stretchy fibre in them are probably not going to be stretchy enough, so just, just check on that before you make your final decision. These Liberty fleece back sweatshirts that we've got are a really good example of that um, because they are 100% cotton. They've got that gorgeous, lovely fleece back, but you can see there is just not a huge amount of stretch in them. The next one I wanted to mention is ribbing and ribbing is a really stretchy fabric that predominantly gets used for the cuffs on jumpers, the hem bands and then it gets used at neck, on the neck band as well. So some patterns will say that you need so much of your main fabric and then you need so much of the ribbing as well. But more often than not, you can actually just use the main fabric to make the ribbing part of the garments. You just need to buy a bit extra of your main fabric. You usually just have to make the pattern pieces a little bit bigger because your main fabric's unlikely to stretch as much as the ribbing. But if you check out that neckband video that I mentioned earlier, it sort of explains how to do that. Um, the last one that I wanted to talk to you about is the, the Ponte Roma, or the, the double knit or the interlocks. That's the one that's created kind of like two layers of fabric together, tends to be quite sturdy. Um, it is stretchy as well, but it won't sort of move around as much as say the viscose or the medal one. So it's a really popular one for beginners. This one's actually kind of quilted, so it's like two layers, but it's got this, this kind of nice diamond effect in it, which is really nice. Due to their stability, they're good for low of different types of projects so tops jumpers dresses skirts all sorts of things so the Tilly and the Buttons Coco dress and top is a good example of that um, and I've got a sample of the funnel neck one and because 
the fabric does hold its shape a little bit more it is going to hold the shape of that funnel really nicely and um, the deer and doe zephyr dress is another good one um, and then the megan nielsen river dress is another example it's just really like easy basic dress with the Liesl and co maritime knit top is another one this is actually looks quite similar to the grain line lark tee with the boat neck but the difference with this one is it's got a facing around the neck and then it's got little slits at the side too so i hope that's given you a really good idea of different types of jersey and how they behave the main thing really is looking at the amount of stretch that they've got and is that right for your pattern especially if your pattern has got negative ease and then also how the fabric's actually going to behave is it going to hold its shape or is it going to be more floppy it's the it's the cottons that tend to hold their their shape more and the viscoses and medals that tend to kind of float around and yeah move so if you've got any questions at all please do ask me them in the comments below of course i'll link to my blog post which in the description of this video has got links to all the patterns that I've suggested and also links to the different fabrics as well remember we ship worldwide and you can get all of our fabrics online so you can check out the website if you've seen anything that you like and um, stock does vary quite a lot so depending on when you're watching this we might not have the exact examples that I've shown you but we've always got a big range of, of stretchy jersey fabric so um, you can always get in touch if there's something you're looking for and you can't see and um, I'll be back again soon with my next installment and it is going to be on different types of denim fabric so if you haven't subscribed to my channel just remember to hit subscribe so you don't miss out on the next one and thanks for watching and i'll see you next time bye